thank you for this hearing. Um, <clears throat> so appreciate the opportunity to, to focus again on, on the benefits uh, of nuclear and, and uh, particularly advanced nuclear reactors. Um, I think we were able to accomplish some good things in this committee last year, and we want to be able to continue to, to build on those. <clears throat> I want to focus my my questions this morning on, on some of the regulatory uh, matters related to, to microgrids. So I don't know, perhaps this is a question best asked uh, for Ms. Roma. We have several microreactors that are in pre-application review with the NRC. Uh, one company, Oklo, has an application accepted for review under the combined license approach. The issue is the regulatory structure equates an operating permit with a specific site there. So <clears throat> what should we do with this? Should Congress act to create new exemptions for microreactors so that a single design can be permitted for, for multiple sites? How, how can we, again, allow for uh, uh, an approach that will ensure greater commercialization opportunities for, for microreactors? And I, I pose that to Ms. Roma, but if there are others that wish to, to respond to that, I'd appreciate well, well, I can start, start off and then the others can hop in. Um, so the NRC does have a design certification process, um, but the NRC kind of regulations that they stood up were for large scale light water reactors. Um, and they envisioned a very slow and long process where a company applied for a design certification. Once the NRC reviewed and issued the design certification, which can be a five or six year process, then a, country, a company could apply for a site specific combined construction and operating license application. Um, it could also apply for an early site permit where the NRC would do early environmental review of a site. And then it could apply for the COL and then get the COL. That whole process combined, which is probably what the NRC's preference would be for anybody doing licensing, uh, can take decades right. and is cost prohibitive and doesn't make any sense, particularly for designs like micro reactors, which have very, very small footprints, both from a public safety standpoint and from an environmental standpoint. And the NRC has been really looking at its regulations to figure out how can we right size these for these types of facilities, but they're bringing their large light water reactor mindset which is really a round peg in a square hole. And so what Congress can do is can any you know, legislation to support the streamlining or even help check certain boxes so that the NRC can do a more efficient, not a less robust, a more efficient review commensurate with the, the size and impact of these facilities, that would be very, very helpful. Well, I appreciate that. You know, I have, I've tried to, um, uh, tried to outline the potential that we would have in a place like Alaska, where I think we have some um, some interesting applications for for micro reactors and what we might be able to, to deploy. But when you look at the structure within the uh, the regulatory commission, it's it's just not set up to to help facilitate deployment in a state like Alaska, where you've got some some pretty remote uh, communities, some pretty remote sites that would benefit from exactly this type. So you're suggesting we need legislation. NRC says that they're dealing with what they're going to deal with. Did one of you, Mr. Sell, nice to see you. Uh, Senator Murkowski, there is something interesting going on that I think is relevant. And that, as you may know, the Department of Defense has a program to design micro mobile reactors for right. Ford operating bases. Our company, X Energy, is one of the companies involved in that, in that design effort. That reactor will be deployed on a prototype basis by 2024. And although it will be licensed by the Department of Energy, the NRC regulators are embedded into the program. And so there is an opportunity for the NRC to observe, to learn, and to uh, take lessons out of that and apply those to the commercial applications like Oklo and others. So that's, it's, it's a really, it's a rapid technology development program and the licensing process to go along with that is having to evolve to go with it, to move at the appropriate level of speed. And I think real lessons will come out of that effort. It's my observation is that mm -hmm. we are, we're at that point where 
we have, we're, we're building out the, the prototypes. We know what it is that we need to do. The things that's slowing us down is, is the regulator who hasn't caught up to the fact that this is, this is not you know, your father's old, Oldsmobile in the sense of, of what we have been building in this country in terms of, of nuclear facilities for so many decades. I, I, I think that's true. I will acknowledge that, that the last uh, uh, number of years at the NRC and, and now with Chairman Hansen, it, it's, it's, there is a strong commitment at the leadership level to be responsive to the laws that this committee uh, originated and passed and, and reformed the process. And they want to do the right thing. Uh, but, you know, sometimes it's uh, change management in a large organization is challenging. Mm -hmm. And we're going to continue. I would agree. I would, I would agree, agree Senator. Senator. The leadership has been very progressive. And I think legislation that empowers the NRC to uh, consider new uh, approaches towards regulation, uh, that, that's really helpful. And, and finally, I'll add that, you know, I've worked around the world in nuclear energy and been asked many times in other countries, what does the NRC think? Uh, the NRC is, is the worldwide standard for nuclear safety. And if we think about a Team USA approach, um, if we have advanced reactors that are licensed by the NRC, the U.S. is going to be so competitive uh, worldwide um, offering these reactors as, uh, as um, you know, options to Russian or Chinese technology. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, thank you. I have additional questions that I'm probably going to submit for the record, um, where, as you know, we're bouncing in between votes. But this is such an important hearing, and I really appreciate that.